Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, fellas and girls, there's no beating this eating. For delightful spring breakfast, enjoy crisp, fresh, Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice topped with milk or cream and juicy strawberries or other fruit. And there's no beating the news coming in just a few minutes. All about how you can get a terrific Sergeant Preston camping outfit. Don't miss it. Have paper and pencil ready. Be listening. (laughs) Ruth Kelly, the general manager of the Golden Lady Mine, and half a dozen of his men were lined up at the bar. When Roof looked at his watch and announced, Well, the stage will be rolling into town any minute now. We'd better get outside to meet our new boy. All right, Roof, come on. There was no sign of the stage, but the sight that met the men's eyes as they stepped out of the cafe stopped them in their tracks. It was a young man riding down the street toward them. Well, look who's coming. His boots were polished, his gray whipcord breeches were spotless, and his tweed coat was faultlessly tailored. His horse was a mettlesome gray, and as he drew rein in front of the mansion house, Roof took out his six-gun and fired into the air. Ready, cowboy! The gray reacted to the shots and shouts by rearing high in the air, and then he started to buck. He crow-hopped, he jackknifed, he twisted in the air. He fought to unseat his rider with all the strength and cunning at his command, but the young dude kept his seat. It was a long five minutes, though, before he brought the gray under control and managed to dismount and tie him to the hitch rack. <laughs> then the dude turned to face the men from the Golden Lady. He had lost his hunter's cap. His curly hair was tousled, and his cheeks were stained red from his exertion. Who was the idiot who fired those shots? Oh, idiot, eh? Huh? You must be talking to me, Goldilocks. Oh, if you're half a man, you'll put up that gun and take what's coming to you. I'd sure like to know what you mean by that. I mean to whip some sense into you. Uh, Did you hear that, boss? He's asking for it, Ruth. That's just what he's doing. And I'm willing to oblige. Here's my gun, boy. Ready, youngster? Yes. It was a good fight while it lasted. The dude was young and strong, but there was power in Ruth's punches that couldn't be denied. He finally connected with a solid right to the jaw, and the dude dropped to the ground. Still, there was no enthusiasm in the men's cheer. Everyone, including Roof, had been impressed by the youngster's courage. Well, uh, maybe you shouldn't have done it, Roof. Well, what else could I do when he called me out? Well, come on, give me a hand with him. We'll take him into the hotel. Yeah, right. yeah, I guess we'd but as they were preparing to lift him from the dusty road, Link Carter, the town's lawyer, pushed his way through the crowd. Hey, one side there. Let me through. Let him lay for a minute, Roof. I want to look at his wallet. Now, you're not meaning to rob him, are you, Link? I don't even have to look inside it. There's his name stamped in gold on the leather. Well, who is he? Who? Look at this wallet and see for yourself. Uh, Todd Sherwood. Sherwood? Yes, Todd Sherwood. Old man Sherwood's nephew. The new owner of the Golden Lady. Your new boss. What a fine welcoming committee you turned out to be. But you you told us he'd be coming in on the stage. So he bought a horse and rode here from Dawson instead. Seems to me you might have guessed. What started this anyway? Oh, I scared his horse and he called me an idiot. Well, I'll second the motion. Well, uh, what shall we do? Take him to my house. We'll give him some first aid. Afterwards, I suggest that all of you start looking for a new job. Oh, wait a minute. 
There was no immediate firing, however. When Todd came to and was introduced to Roof, he accepted the manager's apology. He rode out to the mine with him that night, and for the next month they worked side by side. But Todd had nothing to do with the mine's personnel after working hours. He made friends with Hugh Merrick, the owner of the Golconda mine, and spent most of the evenings with him at the mansion house in town. Then, about a month after his arrival, he called Roof into his office. Yeah, Todd? Uh, sit down. Uh, anything wrong? Yes. I decided to let you go. Well, that's all. I must admit that my reasons are mostly personal. But I've apologized for what happened that first day in town. I know, and I've tried to forget it. I know you've been here a long time, and that my uncle thought a great deal of you, but... But aside from all that, I don't like your methods. What's wrong with them? We're not washing out enough gold dust. You've been listening to you, Merrick. Perhaps I have. You must admit that our production can't compare with the Golcondas. Well, at the moment, maybe, but the Golden Lady will keep producing for years. The Golcondas practically worked out now. There's no sense in looking at mine. Isn't there? Well, of course, if that's what you want to do... I I'd... don't think you're qualified to pass on Hugh Merrick's judgment. You don't like him. That's right. He's a little too slick for my taste. Too civilized, you mean? I use the right word. You'll find that out. Merrick happens to be my friend, and he's promised to help me reorganize the Golden Lady. The first step being to get rid of me, huh? Yes. Who will be taking my place? I... I shall. You haven't had much experience. I'll learn. Yes, I'm... I'm sure of that. Well, boss, the boys have had an idea you might not be keeping me on, and there are five of them. Bart, Smitty, Pete, Mike, Texas. They'll want to be leaving when I do. I wish they wouldn't. You'll be needing them. Why should I need strong arm men? Is that how you think of them? Yes. Gold is valuable stuff, boy. Sometimes it takes a strong arm to protect it. I'm not worried about being robbed. Well, in that case, you won't mind if they leave, huh? Mm, no, not at all. Send them in and I'll pay them off. Here's your check, Roof. Well, uh, would you mind writing another one? Isn't that enough? It's too much. Just give me my time. If you won't take any tips from me, I don't want any from you. It was a month later that Sergeant Preston rode into town and drew rein in front of the mansion house. Oh, Blackie, oh, boy. The stable boy took Blackie. And the sergeant and King walked up the steps to the porch of the hotel. Ruth Kelly was sitting in one of the rocking chairs, drowsing in the sun. Hello, Ruth. Uh, hello, Sergeant. Well, how are you, King? What are you doing here in the middle of the day? Well, I'm a man of leisure now. You're not working at the Golden Lady anymore? Uh, I was fired a month ago. Oh? Me and five of the old-timers. A new broom sweeps clean, huh? Well, I suppose you know why I'm here. Yeah, sure. The robberies at the mine. Only one's been reported. Well, that was when they cleaned out the sluices. Last week, they knocked out the guard in the office, worked the combination of the safe, and made off with all the gold dust Todd had on hand. He had to dig deep into his reserve bank account to meet his payroll. Any idea who's responsible? Well, it... Could be some of the new men. I'll question them all, of course. Any other ideas? Mm, one. Hugh Merrick might have planned the robbery. Hugh Merrick? The owner of the Golconda? The Golconda's all washed up, Sergeant. I've been making inquiries. Merrick's been lying about his production. Well, now, why should he do a thing like that? Well, who knows? Maybe he wants to unload the mine on some greenhorn. Maybe he wants people to think he still has money, so they won't suspect him of stealing. That's a serious accusation. No, I'm, uh, I'm not making any accusation. I have no proof. I said maybe. But uh, the way Todd kowtows to Merrick, that makes me sick. You know, it's a shame. In spite of the fact that you don't work for the Golden Lady anymore, you still seem to be interested in the mine. Why? Well, I, I worked there a long time. Any other reason? Well, uh, I like Todd, and I can't help feeling that what's happening is all my fault. If we had to start it out all wrong, and I'm to blame for that. The boy wouldn't be so thick with Mary. You started out all wrong? Yeah. The day he got here, he was riding a gray stallion. He Roof described gray. Todd's arrival and the welcome he had received, the coldness which had resulted between the manager and the new owner, 
and everything that had been said when Roof was fired. Who were the men who left with you? Well, there's Bart, Pete, Smitty, Texas, and Mike. Good men? They sure are. There'd be no robberies if they were still working there. Where are they? Oh, around. Working? Not regular. Why haven't you taken another job? Oh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm looking around for a good connection. Hmm. How would you like to work for the Golden Lady again? Oh, there's no chance of that. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Well, I hate to sit here and watch what's going on. It's good enough for me. We'll have another talk, Ruth, after I've completed my investigation. Come on, King. First we eat, and then we go to work. The sergeant rode out to the Golden Lady that afternoon and started his investigation of the gold robberies. That night, Ben Corey, one of the new men at the Golden Lady, met Hugh Merrick in the back room of the Mansion House bar. Well? The Northwest Mounted always get their man. Don't try to be funny. What happened? Uh, the sergeant asked questions. We answered him. He didn't learn a thing. Did he question you? Sure. <laughs> After all, I was a guard who was knocked out the night you opened the safe. Were there any questions about the safe? Yeah. Todd told him he'd bought it from Joe Phillips. And Joe told the sergeant he bought it from me. <laughs> well, I expected that. And if the sergeant questions me, I'll admit I knew the combination of the safe. That isn't enough to connect me with the robbery. The uh, sergeant advised Todd to have the combination changed. <laughs> and locking the barn door after the horse is stolen. He's having a locksmith come out to the mine tomorrow. Next time, you'll have to blast it open. And wake the whole camp? Don't be a fool. Yeah, but you said you had to clean him out once more. That's right. <laughs> once more, and he'll need money so badly, he'll have to borrow. He may even be ready to sell out. But how can you work it? You needn't think we'll try anything while that Mountie's around here. We'll wait until Todd is ready to make a shipment into Dawson. You mean hold up the wagons? That's the idea. I'll need plenty of warning from you when the shipment's to be made. Oh, sure. Now, you'd better leave now. Yeah. What's the matter? The sergeant's out there. He's watching this door. And we'll both leave by the window. Ah, Sergeant Preston. He may be smarter than you think. He may find it isn't healthy to be too smart. Out the window. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know, Sergeant Preston, a lot of our listeners would give anything to have a taste of the life of a Mountie like yourself. Well, any boy or girl who has a chance to camp out and cook his own meals in the open air is getting one of the thrills we Mounties have in our job. And say, fellas and girls, here's your chance to have that thrill. It's news, big news, about a Sergeant Preston camping outfit that Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice are offering to the sergeant's friends. Yes, a wonderful new prospector's tent and a genuine all-metal camp stove. Picture the prospector's tent of bright green, sturdy plastic. A tent that stands four and one-half feet high, is three feet square at the base, and has a flap to close it up snug and tight. You get the tent, tent poles, stakes, everything you need to set it up easily in just a few minutes, outdoors or in the house. Yet, for this wonderful new waterproof prospector's tent, all you do is send one dollar and a box top from delicious Quaker popped wheat or rice. And here's something else, just as exciting. A genuine all-metal camp stove that works. It's not a toy. You can really cook with it a whole meal. On the top section, you can fry hamburgers, hot dogs, bacon and eggs. In the Dutch oven, you can bake potatoes, biscuits. Over the broiler, you can cook cocoa, soup, beans. There's a firebox to fill with twigs, charcoal, or canned heat for fuel. And this complete four-piece camp stove plus a handy combination stove tongs and cooking fork, is yours for only 50 cents and a box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Now, to get both tent and stove, the whole Sergeant Preston camping outfit, send two box tops from Quaker puffed wheat or rice and $1.50. Send to Camping Outfit, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now, with your order, you get a little booklet that shows you how easy it is to put up your tent outdoors or indoors, and gives you tips for safe camping and cooking. What's more, if you aren't completely satisfied with your prospector's tent and camp stove, you get your money back. Now, if you tuned in late, get this. Grocers now have special new packages of swell-tasting Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice with full offer details plus order blank right on the packages. 
For the prospector's tent, send a box top and one dollar. For the camp stove, send a box top and 50 cents. For both tent and stove, send two box tops and one dollar and 50 cents. They're going like hotcakes, and the supply is limited. So hustle up. You'll be a big shot in your gang if you're first to get this terrific Sergeant Preston camping outfit. Send now, tonight, to Camping Outfit, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. The people of the district were disappointed when Sergeant Preston left town the following day, apparently without finding any tangible clue to the robberies at the Golden Lady. But the sergeant didn't go far. He merely moved his headquarters to a deserted trapper's cabin in the forest. And at nightfall, six men came there, Roof and the five others who had left the Golden Lady with him. Find a place to sit, men. What I have to say shouldn't take long. Now, uh... Roof tells me that you're all interested in finding whoever's been robbing the Golden Lady. Right, Sergeant. We don't like to see anybody get a dirty deal. I understand. Well, I can use your help. Sometimes a man in uniform's at a disadvantage when it comes to getting information. Yeah. No, I want the sergeant told the men everything he had learned while he was in town, including the fact that Merrick knew the combination of the Golden Lady safe, and that Ben Corey had met Merrick the night before in the mansion house. Finally, I also learned that Merrick is interested in buying the Golden Lady. With the boss's gold. And Todd will be in severe financial difficulties if he has another loss. I, uh, don't have to go into any details about the machinery the mines bought recently. No, no, we know all about that. Another loss would make it very hard for him to meet his running expenses, and he must get gold to Dawson and into the bank there to meet his other obligations. Merrick will try to stop him. It's possible. Well, let him. That's what I say. Let him. Let him try to hold up Todd's gold shipment. You might even offer to help him, Ruth. Me? Help him rob the boss? You want me to go to Mary? No, I'd like you to start talking to Ben Corey. Ask him questions about production at the Golden Lady. Give him the impression that you're trying to find out when Todd will make his next shipment. Let him think I'm interested in holding up the wagon, eh? Exactly. And if he rises to the bait? It may lead to something, it may not. It's worth a try, anyway. And I'm asking the rest of you to stand by in case we need your help later on. The meeting broke up. Roof found his opportunity to talk to Ben Corey the following day. And Ben was extremely interested in Roof's pretended dislike for Todd. He asked him to have supper with him in a private room at the mansion house. And during the meal, Hugh Merrick joined them. And later that night, Roof reported the details of their conversation to the sergeant. Merrick joined Corey and me at supper. I'm in, sergeant. He actually suggested you help him hold up the gold shipment. Well, not in so many words. He got the idea over, though. We meet at the gold counter tomorrow night to talk it over some more. I believe Todd will be shipping the following day. That's right. Mm, good enough. Come back here after you talk with Merrick tomorrow night and uh, pass the word to your men to be here, too. They'll be here, sergeant. Don't worry about that. The next midnight, Bart, Smitty, Pete, Mike, and Texas were waiting with the sergeant when Roof arrived at the cabin. Well, Roof? All set. The wagon's supposed to start out from the Golden Lady at daybreak, 5.30. We'll be waiting at the ford across the creek. And uh, who are we? Well, no one from the Gold County crew. There's Merrick, Ben Corey, myself, and three hooligans from town. Fletcher, Saunders, and Dale who have evidently been in his pay for a long time. I don't understand why Merrick should wait until the Ford to attack. Well, that's the way he's planned it. I'd better be getting back to the gold counter, Sergeant. Uh, go ahead. See you later, man. All right, all right, all right. At three o'clock in the morning, Sergeant Preston drew rein and dismounted in front of Todd Sherwood's cabin. Oh, buggy. Oh, boy. Easy. <laughs> Quiet, King. Sergeant Preston. Hello, Todd. I've heard you're starting out for Dawson with some gold this morning. As soon as it gets light. I've also learned that the same cooks who robbed you before mean to hold you up on the trail. You know who they are? Yes. It's Roof and the men I fired, isn't it? What gives you that idea? Oh, what else can I think? They have a good reason to hate me. This would be a fine way to get even. Todd, I'd like you to hitch up your wagon right now and hit the trail with me before it gets light. I can't afford another loss, sir. The gold will stay in the safe. We'll fill some bags with rocks and load the wagon with them. You made plans to catch him in the act? I've made plans. You drive the wagon, and I'll ride alongside. All right, Sergeant. I'm game. Let's go. 
At four o'clock in the morning, Ben Corey pulled his lathered horse to a stop in a small clearing not far from the Golconda mine. Oh, holy, holy, Five men, including Merrick and Roof, jumped to their feet when they saw him. What's the matter? You weren't supposed to be here until daybreak. They've already started. Todd's driving the wagon. And Sergeant Preston is riding with him. We're not wasting any time. Any of your saddles, men. Oh, easy there. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The sun was rising as the sergeant and Todd entered the gulch. I want you to move fast when I give the word, Todd. Plenty of boulders on either side of the trail. Get out of the wagon and take cover behind one of them. Uh, they're waiting in here? It was supposed to be at the ford, but I don't like the way King's acting. Well, they call this dead man's gulch sometimes, don't they? I'd like a fine place for an ambush. Well, I don't see anything, King. Neither do I. No, I do. Up on the ridge to the right, I caught a glimpse of a man. Quick, get out of that wagon. Hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 <laughs> get down. Just in time. Sergeant, that man you saw, it was Roof. He was wearing a bandana over his face, but I'm sure. So am I. He took a chance showing himself. Uh, are we going to return their fire? Enough to keep them where they are for the time being. <laughs> The gunfight continued for 15 minutes. Then the sergeant, who had been watching King closely, noticed the great dog was looking up the slope behind the sergeant and Todd. All right, boy. It's all right. Sergeant, there's someone up there behind friends, us. Friends, Todd. I've been expecting them. They're friends? Why don't they show themselves? They have their orders. They're waiting until we bring these bandits into the open. But how can we do that? I'll show you. Take this stick. Yeah? Now put your cap on it and hold it up. A little oh. bit above the rock. Oh, like... Like this? Oh, yell. Ah! Good, I'll shoot a few more times. I'll take off my coat, put the stick through the arm, and hold it out so they can catch a glimpse of the red cloth, like this. Oh! Now there'll be no more firing from us. Let them think we've both been hit. I want the gold in the wagon. They'll be coming after it if they think we're done for. Oh, Come straight here. If we don't shoot, they'll not get this far. All right, men, get mounted. There they come. I can see them. Roof and five others. Don't show yourself. Heading straight for the wagon. All except Roof. He, he's dismounted up on the slope. That's because our moment's come now, Todd. Look up on the slope behind us. Riders. Your friends. Your very good friends. Under Bart's leadership, the old-timers from the Golden Lady swept down the slope toward Merrick and his men, who were dismounted near the wagon. The sergeant also opened fire on them, and three of the bandits were wounded. A fourth dove for cover, crying for mercy. That was Ben Corey. Hugh Merrick swung into his saddle and urged his mount down the trail. He disappeared around a bend without being hit, but Roof took after him. The sergeant called out to Ben. Step out in the open with your hands up. The command was instantly obeyed. Todd was bewildered. I don't understand these men. I'll explain everything later. I'm going after Roof. That wasn't necessary, though, for just then, Roof rode back around the bend, leading Merrick's horse. The owner of the Golconda was slumped across the pommel of his saddle. Recognizing him, Todd was even more confused. And it was not until the bandit's wounds had been bandaged that the sergeant finished with his explanations. Then Todd looked from Hugh Merrick, the man he had trusted, to Roof and the others he had fired, and shook his head. I, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. But I sure thought all our plans were smashed when Merrick decided to hold you up here instead of at the ford. Well, you didn't expect the sergeant to get caught napping, did you? He decided the wagon should have protection all the way. Yeah, so you followed it, huh? Half a mile back. We closed in when we heard shooting. Sergeant, I'd like to give evidence for the crowd. What evidence? About the first two robberies. Shut up. Merrick promised to split with us, but he's been stalling. I don't think he ever meant to give us our share. He has all the gold he stole from Todd in a green strong box in his safe. Well, that means you'll get it all back, Todd. It may help you to testify against Merrick Ben, but I'm not promising anything. Uh, I mean to tell the whole truth. Uh, for the first time in your life, probably. What do we do now, Sergeant? Oh, well, we'll take the wounded men in the wagon. Ben can ride his own horse with his hands tied behind his back. We'll go back to the mine first and pick up the gold. Huh? That's right, Merrick. It's resting comfortably in your old safe. We'll pick up the gold and then head for Dawson. You want us to ride with you? If you like. We like. We uh, want to make sure the boss gets to the bank with his gold. We'll give him a guard of honor all the way. <laughs> it will be a guard of honor, Rufus. 
a guard eye on her. Uh, and if it's possible for you men to forgive and, and forget, well, what I mean is that if admitting I've been wrong will do any good, well... Are you asking us to come back and work for you? Well, I don't suppose it. Never mind the supposing. The answer is yes. <laughs> right, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Say, fellas and girls, these spring mornings, here's how to spring a surprise treat on your appetite. In a big cereal bowl, put a layer of fresh, juicy, sliced strawberries or bananas. Then put a layer of crisp, fresh, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Put in another layer of each. Then top with chilled milk or cream. And mmm. There's the spring feast. And don't forget, special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and rice are at grocers now. These new packages give full details of the sensational offer of a Sergeant Preston camping outfit. Send right away for your prospector's tent, camp stove, or both. You can get the wonderful new waterproof prospector's tent of sturdy plastic and ready to set up outdoors or indoors for only one dollar and a box top from Quaker popped wheat or rice. You can get the complete four-piece all-metal camp stove to cook hot dogs, baked potatoes, fry eggs, a genuine camp stove for only 50 cents, and a box top from Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice. Or you can get both tent and stove for two box tops and only one dollar and 50 cents. Send to Camping Outfit, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Hurry, hurry, Supply Limited. Here's the address so you can send tonight. Camping Outfit, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, you're leaving to patrol the Stewart Mountain area? That's right, sir. We've had word that your old friend, John LaRue, is planning to ship a fortune in gold out of that area. Since you'll be near his place, stop long enough to make sure there's no attempt at robbery. Very well, Inspector. A gang of thieves are willing to commit murder to obtain LaRue's gold. When Preston tries to protect it, he jeopardizes his life as well as the lives of his friends. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday. On Thursday, by Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Only Quaker Paco 10 has wheat and rice shot from guns. That's Quaker Paco 10, a regular cereal pantry. Six different delicious ready-to-serve cereals. Ten crisp, fresh individual servings. At breakfast, you can take your pick of the pack. Have your own separate individual package. Enjoy a different cereal extra fresh every morning. Just remember, only Quaker Paco 10 as all your family's cereal favorites. Try Quaker Paco 10. You'll be glad you did. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. Listen tomorrow at the same time to the Green Hornet. Brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again. Delicious Orange Crush. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>